Welcome back. It is November 18th, 2016. On this day in history, November 18th, 1969, South Vietnamese troops fight their first major, ba major battle after American troops begin withdrawal. On uh, November 18th, 1883, railroads create the first time zones. Four continental time zones, the goal to end the confusion of dealing with thousands of local times and also cut down on collisions on the train tracks. And in 1863, Lincoln travels to Gettysburg. It is true, on this day 153 years ago, President Abraham Lincoln boarded a train for Gettysburg, Pennsylvania to deliver a speech at the dedication of a cemetery to soldiers killed during the Battle of Gettysburg, the deadliest battle during the Civil War. The short address Lincoln delivered became one of the most famous speeches in American history. You know, just a year prior to that historic speech, President Lincoln also set a new precedent when he announced that if the Confederates did not end their fighting and rejoin the Union, he would free all the slaves in those rebellious states the prelude to the Emancipation Proclamation, the subject of today's American Moment. Abraham Lincoln began the war between the states with a single stated purpose, to preserve the Union. So it surprised everyone when in July of 1862, President Lincoln announced his intentions to issue an Emancipation Proclamation to free the Southern slaves. Lincoln was urged to delay his proclamation until the Union Army could boast a battlefield victory. That opportunity came at the Battle of Antietam, when Union forces drove Lee's army out of Maryland. Five days later, on September 22, 1862, President Lincoln issued the preliminary Emancipation Proclamation, stating slaves in those areas still in rebellion within 100 days will be freed. This action made slavery the focus of the war and ultimately caused France and England to withdraw their support of the South. The following January, Lincoln issued the actual Emancipation Proclamation, stating that all persons held as slaves within the rebel states are and henceforth shall be free. You're watching An American Moment on Newsmax TV. And from history to the here and now, Miranda Khan right here with us on the anchor desk to treat us to a prime preview of what she has planned for us this evening at 8 p.m. Eastern on Newsmax Prime. You ready for this? Well, I'll try to be. Even before Donald Trump became our president-elect, rumors swirled for months, months, with speculation as to who Trump would tap to serve under Team Trump. Now, the moment of truth has arrived. Senator Jeff Sessions, make America great again. You can't begin to exercise the leadership you need to exercise if you don't understand what's happening on the ground. The way I feel is that there is a huge shift in momentum and the American public are starting to really wake up. Yes, a transition official on Trump's team says Congressman Mike Pompeo will serve as a new director of the CIA. General Michael Flynn will become our national security advisor and Senator Jeff Sessions will become the next U.S. Attorney General. While it's still not technically official, we're told all men have accepted their new position. So coming up tonight on Newsmax Prime, we're going to show you what all these men share in common, and we're going to give you a little backgrounder and why Trump decided to select these specific individuals. You know, I've got the first thing they have in common, yeah. which is the fact that they all have previous government service, if you will. Mm -hmm. General Flynn, mm -hmm. as a three-star general, Right. running uh, national intelligence or the defense Even intelligence. Giving away all my teeth. Well, no, I'm just thinking about that. And then Pompeo's interesting guy, right. West Point grad, and not They're just all military, any. fine, that's West it. Point. The military, they all have extensive military background. But you see, just pointing that out doesn't mean we don't have the, the details, the granularity. That, that's right. That you will bring the, the incredible detail that, that comes our way tonight. <laughs> at 8 o'clock Eastern you on Newsmax it. Prime. Thanks very much, Miranda. My pleasure. Well, uh, there's something else I want to talk to you about, and I think it's pretty hip. You know, uh, we have talked about the dissatisfaction of the left 
how it's made manifest in so many different ways. Uh, my old friend, Laura Ingram, who has been rumored and often mentioned as perhaps the next White House press secretary, Yes, uh, press secretary to Donald Trump, Laura Ingram, she of Life Z, she of her nationally syndicated talk radio show. Well, she appeared yesterday on NBC's Today Show, and I want you to watch the way in which she puts the Today Show hosts and avowed leftists, Matt Lauer and Savannah Guthrie, in their place. Check it out. Real quickly, Laura, I mean, I, we know you. We know your show. You have a sharp tongue. You're known for your sharp pen. Oh, I mean, Savannah. <laughs> sharp tongue. You know, oh, this please. is one of those jobs where you could create an international <laughs> incident from the White House is that briefing what, room. Is that what you're really worried about, an international <laughs> no, no. incident? You know, I think so. I, look, I think some some folks who are watching now, they, they, they are conservative talk show hosts, I was a Supreme Court clerk. I worked as a white collar litigator at Skadden Arps. Uh, I have a you know I have a pretty broad uh, career in, in both uh, government as a young speechwriter in the Reagan administration. I worked at the Department of Transportation, Department of Education, and the White House in domestic policy. Let me go back to you and the potential that you're White House press secretary. What's the dynamic going to be in that press room? Because Donald Trump spent the last year and a half basically calling members of the press and the media crooked, corrupt, dishonest. Is there going to have to be some fence mending for whoever takes that position? Well, I think, I think it, uh, one thing that is going to be uh, important, I would imagine, for the Trump folks is to have a very you know, transparent and you know, practical approach to the press. I mean, I think the press has its own problems uh, with credibility and building back credibility with the American people. Every poll, not conservative polls, show that there are a lot of folks out there who believe the media is really biased and really was in the tank for Hillary Clinton. And I know people don't like to hear that, but that's the way most people view the press today. I think the press has a lot of work to do to build back its own credibility. And I think for Donald Trump, I think he wants someone who knows the issues, who's going to try to explain them to the American people right. and, and uh, keep people updated. I, I don't think it's, it, it's, all, it's all that complicated. No, it's not all that complicated. And Laura was fairly polite to Matt Lauer because Matt sitting there trying to put the onus on President-elect Trump, let's just review the record involving one Matt Lauer. It was Mr. Lauer who, late in the Clinton presidency, offered the sympathetic interview to then First Lady Hillary Clinton where she launched her famous observation that she and her husband were victims of a, ready for this, quote, vast right-wing conspiracy. And there was Matt Lauer nodding, emoting, agreeing with the smokescreen put up by Mrs. Clinton, in my opinion, for uh, actions taken by her perjurious spouse. And you also have the curious case of Matt Lauer. Uh, back in the days when newspapers were still vibrant, thriving, and you actually looked forward to your Sunday newspaper, it was Matt Lauer early during his days on The Tonight Show, who pinned a column for one of the Sunday supplements. And you will forgive me if I do not remember whether it was Parade Magazine, I believe edited in those days by Lloyd Shearer, or Family Weekly. I believe it was the former. But Matt Lauer pinned a column in that Sunday supplement calling for radical massive gun control. In fact, if memory serves, going so far as to call essentially for repeal of the Second Amendment. So just to remember a couple of things about Matt Lauer, who certainly is not objective by any stretch of the imagination, uh, one of those denizens of the left. Of course, we're not the media, we're Newsmax TV, and tonight, on Newsmax Prime at 8. In addition to what Miranda Kahn told us about, we will have Andrea Kay, Michael Patrick Flanagan, uh, Dr. Jay Richards, and we bring back The Wire, stories that have been trending with our own Miranda Kahn and Ed Berliner. All of that starts at 8 Eastern. I'll look for you then. Till then, thanks for watching.